Hello and welcome to this tutorial, which is all about how to find all of the subnet numbers you create when you apply a subnet mask to a classful network. So we've looked at in detail how to figure out how many subnets you create, and we also looked at determining the size of each one of those subnets. In other words, how many hosts are going to be in each one of the new subnets. Well, here we're going to focus solely on how to find the actual subnet numbers of all the subnets that we create. So we're going to get started, and the assumption we're going to make in this tutorial is that we're working with fixed-length subnet masks. As you'll recall, that means that the subnet mask used is going to be the same for all of the subnets we create. We talk about variable length subnet masks in this process in a different tutorial. Okay, so going forward in this tutorial, all the subnet masks will be the same. And when we start, we do one thing, and we look at this subnet mask that we're going to be using, and we identify the octet that does not equal 255 or 0. That's kind of the key to where everything begins for us in this process. So with that in mind, let's actually take a look at a few examples. And our first challenge is this. Given this 192.168.2.0 class C network, find all of the subnets that are created when this subnet mask is applied. And the new subnet mask is going to be a .224, which you know is a slash 27. All right, so we have our challenge. Let's go ahead and actually see how we can go about answering this question. Okay, so we have our Class C network listed along with its default subnet mask. And then we have our new subnet mask that we're going to use to chop it up. So the first thing, like we said, is to identify the octet that does not equal 255 or 0. That's pretty simple. Here it is, .224. So that's step one. Step two is not that much harder. We use our special formula here, and the formula always looks like this in answering this question. 256 minus the octet value that does not equal 255 or 0. So all we're saying here is this octet here. So if we do the math, 256 minus 224, we get our answer of 32. Now 32 is a very valuable number for us because essentially all of the subnets we're going to create by applying this subnet mask to this classful network are going to be in multiples of 32. So at this point all we have to do is keep adding up 32. I'll show you how. So we just start with the classful network itself and here you can see it's a slash 27. That's our first subnet. In order to get to the second subnet all we do is add 32 to the fourth octet. If we do that, that is our second subnet. And we just keep repeating this process, 64, 96, 128, 160, 192, 224, and if we do it again, we get 256. Now we know we have to stop there because 256 is not a valid number. We know that the maximum value of an octet is 255. So at that point we're done and these are all of our octets. Now you don't have to go all the way up to 256. If you remember from the other tutorials, you can determine how many subnets you're going to create by using the number of subnet bits. So here it'd be 2 to the power of 3, or 2 times 2 times 2, in order to figure out that we're creating 8 subnets. Okay, and so that's it. It's a pretty, pretty simple method. Let's take another example, though, which is going to be a little bit harder and challenge us in a different way. So this time we're going to use a class B network number, 172.16.0.0. And there is the default subnet mask for a class B network. And here we have our new subnet mask. And in fact, it's the same subnet mask we used in the last example. So we can easily identify the octet we're interested in. It's the only one that does not equal 255 or 0. And then we just need to plug that into our formula. 
224, and our answer is 32. So, this seems just like the last example. Pretty easy, right? Well, not so fast. Let's see what happens here. If we do the math, we can start at the classful network itself and we keep adding 32 just like we did last time we get up to 256 we know it's not valid but we're not done there because this is a class B address and yet we're applying a subnet mask which is introducing a lot of subnet numbers a lot of subnet bits so we can create a lot of different subnets here so we've only created eight so far what do you do like how do you keep going well, when you get to the end, when you get to this invalid number, you start over again. But this time, you increase the third octet by one. And then, you just repeat the process all over again. So we have 32, 64, 96, all the way up until we reach our invalid number again, 256. And then we keep going, but now the third octet becomes two. So 172.16.2.0 slash 27. We keep repeating this process until the third octet becomes 255. And here is the very last subnet number in the range of all the subnets we've created. 172.16.255.224. Okay, so keep in mind when you're applying a subnet mask to a class A or a class B network, you're going to more than likely be creating a lot of subnets or just a few with a huge number of hosts in them. So in this example, if you compare the default class B subnet mask to our new subnet mask, you can see we introduced eight plus three more, a total of 11 subnet bits. So that's why we have so many to create here. Um, so run through this process a little bit and check out the tutorial where we looked at subnetting class A and class Bs in order to get a better feel for this, okay? Again, always think about your subnet bits and your network bits and your host bits. If you had stopped here, you would not have listed all of the subnets. Okay? So to summarize what we covered, the first step is to focus on the, on the new subnet mass that you're going to be using to break down your classical network and just find the octet that doesn't equal 255 or 0. And then all you have to do is use this very simple formula in order to find out your special number. And that special number is going to be your multiplier, your multiple. And so all the subnets then are going to start in multiples of that number, like we looked at, 0, 32, 64, 96. Now keep in mind, when you start subnetting class A's and class B's, you're likely going to be introducing many subnet bits. So you're going to be creating many different subnets. So you have to account for that. Um, it's obviously helpful to know the default subnet mask uh, of an A or a B classful network, so that way you can compare that to your new subnet mask to determine how many subnet bits you're introducing, and then you can go ahead and figure it out like we did, and in our case, we had to keep incrementing the third octet. Okay, so play around with this for a little while. Take other A's and B's and subnet them with rather large subnet masks as well. Um, and you'll, you'll eventually get the feel for this. Okay? So that is it. That is how to find all of the subnet numbers when you subnet a classful network. Thanks for watching.